Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. So just before we get into the study, I wanted to give a little bit of, a few, I guess, a few comments on, on the study itself and on what, uh, what I am trying to do in uh, sharing this information with you. So this study is, I thought, of interest because I know that acid reducers and specifically proton pump inhibitors are medications that are very widely prescribed. I've seen them in practice for years and years and years and they are one of the more commonly prescribed medications. And I've also seen many patients that are on these medications for years and years and years, maybe not with the proper follow-up. And this has been a concern for me. We know that proton pump inhibitors, when used for extended periods of time, can leave people more prone to intestinal infection. So what we want to do with this information, because this study is talking more specifically about the possibility of people who are on proton pump inhibitors being more predisposed to infection with COVID-19. But I want you to pay specific attention to uh, the fact that this isn't just about COVID-19. Even though the study is specifying that, this is about intestinal infections in general, and this is about whether this type of medication is appropriate for you. And there are many cases in which it is. And there are chronic conditions where these medications are very appropriate. But if you haven't had good follow-up with your healthcare provider, or if you haven't maybe sat down with your pharmacist to assess your medications and see how they're working for you, maybe now would be a good time to start that conversation. So what you can do is you can draw your own conclusions from this study, but don't make any rash decisions without talking to your pharmacist or your physician first. I will have all the links to the study as well as any supporting information in the description of this video. I'm also going to put a link in that can help you make a decision about whether a proton pump inhibitor is the right choice for you. Don't make this decision alone. This is just a tool that can help you work through this process after we've uh, gone through the study. All right, let's get to it. Today, I will be reviewing a study entitled Increased Risk of COVID-19 Among Users of Proton Pump Inhibitors. If you haven't had a chance to watch my other video, which tells you all about what a proton pump inhibitor is, and does go over other acid reducers, I would encourage you to watch that before you watch this video. It may help you to understand this a little bit more clearly. Okay? All right, so this is where the study came from. It was a study out of the United States, uh, Cedar sinai Medical Center, Michigan Medicine, and UCLA. And of course, always consult your friendly pharmacist or your physician before making any decisions regarding your medications. We will be discussing some medications here. And just to remember to always consult with these people of your healthcare team before making any decisions, okay? And just a reminder, so we have acid reducers that were covered in the other video and uh, there's two specific classes that I want to go over and did go over in the other video are the histamine receptor antagonists, not to be confused with antihistamines, which are H1 receptor antagonists. So when we speak of acid reducers and H2RAs, I'm speaking about uh, things like ranitidine, famotidine, cimetidine was one, two, and then uh, proton pump inhibitors. So those include things like omeprazole, ezomeprazole, rebeprazole, pentoprazole, and there are others. Those are the main or most popular ones um, that I've seen anyways. So the study starts out with this statement. Although the impact of acid suppression on SARS-CoV-2, so that's in relation to infection with COVID-19, is unknown thus far because this is a new virus. We don't have enough information on this virus to make this conclusion yet. So according to prior data, prior data reveals that a pH, so the level of acidity in the stomach, a pH below or equal to 3, so the lower the pH is, the more acidic it is, 
impairs the infectivity of similar SARS-CoV-1. So the SARS virus from 2003, we do know more about, and we do know that in a more acidic environment, the SARS-CoV-1 virus is not as infective. So based on this, we could wonder if that also applies to SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes infection known as COVID-19. So let's look at the study. Okay, so what they did here is this was a population-based survey. It was done online and it was uh, in English. So people who didn't speak English may not have been able to do this and that is one of the factors that could affect the study. Um, and here's what they did. So 86,602 people actually completed the survey, which is a fairly decent sized group. Um, 53,000 of those who completed the survey did complain of prior gastrointestinal issues, which are listed there. Of the people who completed the survey, 3,386 also reported a positive test for COVID-19. And this survey was done in adults, so uh, people over the age of 18 in this case. And what they really honed in on were these people here, who uh, the 3,000 people here who reported a positive COVID-19 test. That's what they were. That's what they were specifically looking at in this case. And some further considerations before we get to the results were that people who had been on a PPI or a H2RA, so a histamine receptor antagonist, um, if they had less than one month of use of these medications um, or their diagnosis was within two months prior to the survey, these were also classified as non-users. So they're really trying to hone on the people who were taking a PPI or an H2 receptor antagonist before they got infected. Um, and so they're trying to see whether the use of that and the increase in the stomach um, pH would have affected their chances for getting COVID-19 were they exposed to the virus, okay? And they also considered the frequency and duration of use of these medications. So they looked at those that are taking these medications once daily versus twice daily. And they also looked at people that were using the medication for less than six months versus more than six months. So those are some interesting uh, factors that they were able to assess. Okay, so we do know that proton pump inhibitors do increase the risk for enteric. So enteric means intestinal. So for enteric infections, which is likely related to proton pump induced hypochlorhydria. So that means that we do know that some people can get intestinal infections and have more likelihood of getting an intestinal infection if they are on this class of medications. And if you watch my previous video, you will note that hypochlorhydria means low levels of acidity in the stomach. So not low pH, low acidity. So that means actually a higher pH, okay? So we know this. We know that this is something that does happen with other pathogens. Um, so the question is, does this also apply to SARS-CoV-2? All right, so after they analyzed all of the data, these are the conclusions that they came to. Now, this is not conclusive, but based on this study, this was the conclusion that they were able to come to, okay? So the use of PPIs was associated in this case with an increased odds for reporting a positive COVID-19 test. So they noticed that there was a higher incidence of a positive test in those who were taking PPIs twice daily dosing, so this is in terms of dosing, twice daily dosing of PPIs left people four times more likely to report a positive test when compared to those who did not use PPIs. Also interesting. H2RAs, so histamine receptor antagonists that we had discussed earlier, did not leave people at an increased risk for reporting a positive test. 
this makes some sense because we know that these medications are not as good at decreasing stomach acid or as effective at decreasing stomach acid as the proton pump inhibitors. And finally, this is also interesting. So lower dose PPIs um, was associated with lower reporting of GI symptoms than those who were not on PPIs. So it could have been that the person um, found that a lower dose actually did help to um, abate some of the GI symptoms that the COVID-19 infection can cause. So that was interesting. Okay, so just to summarize things a little bit here, we know that SARS-CoV-1 is sensitive to pH, and we know that it is infective at a pH greater than three. So that would make us think that a pH of less than three, it would not be infective. So it does support the theory that the acidity of the stomach is somewhat protective against intestinal infections, which is true, we already know. This applies to SARS-CoV-1. Can we conclude that it applies to SARS-CoV-2? Not yet, but there is some evidence coming in saying that it's possible. We also know that twice daily use of a PPI can lead to a 24 hour average pH of greater than six or greater than four for you know, 20 to 22 hours. And that really depends on um, the formulation of the medication and uh, how, it's, how it's being used. In this case, we're referring to twice daily use. So based on that, maybe a PPI could leave the person more susceptible to infections, which could include SARS-CoV-2. It's a question we need to grapple with. And the dose response relationship. So this is very significant, I thought. Those with twice daily dosing were at higher odds for a positive COVID-19 test compared to, the, to lower dosing or non-users. And I've, I already stated that, but I just wanted to say it again because it, it is interesting. And I have seen people who find that once daily dosing is just as effective as twice daily dosing. I'm not recommending that. I'm saying I've observed that. And if you are taking a proton pump inhibitor twice daily, you could speak with your physician or your pharmacist about that. The less potent uh, antihistamine receptor antagonists did not leave people at an increased risk for COVID-19. So that was interesting and does make sense because they're not as potent of an acid reducer. And of course, further studies are needed to assess whether there is a direct correlation between the use of these medications and an increased risk for COVID-19. All right, so remember, always consult your pharmacist or your physician before making decisions regarding any of your medications. I hope that you found this to be interesting. I thought that it was worth sharing and uh, you can draw your own conclusions. Let me know what you think. So thank you very much for your time. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.